quite simple. No one in Belgium manages their healthcare through their smartphone. This is something that I want to change. It's going to take a few years, but I'm going to step by step address all of the needs so that patients can really become digital. And why did you decide to found the company? So I decided to found Rosa uh, because of my father. He had a very, very dire health episode five years ago. And within the same day, in the morning, the doctor said, prepare yourself to say goodbye. And four hours later, this, a different doctor basically said, no, your dad's going to be fine. There had been no change in data, no change in analysis, no change in diagnostics. It's just basically that information was circulating very, very poorly within the health system. And it's through that episode that I basically realized there is something to be done. There must be a better way. And that's where progressively I entered the digital health space and figured out that helping patients was really the key place where I wanted to put all of my entrepreneurial energy. And can you tell us a bit about how you're using data to help those patients exactly? How does it work? When you decide to launch a company in digital health, like obviously data is all around the topic of health, whether it be administrative data, whether it be medical data, you know, like whenever you start feeling sick, you actually start generating data. You go on Google, you type a few symptoms, you look for health professionals, you book an appointment, Sometimes during the consultation, it can be over video, um, there can be notes written, there can be a prescription that's going to be generated. So I'm just illustrating how much data is created actually when you are in need of care, of health advice, or potentially of treatment. With Rosa, what we're planning to do is step by step tackle all of those needs, all of this care pathway and we're starting with the administrative side of this health data. So we're helping patients find health professionals, book appointments, consultations with these health professionals, and progressively um, automate all of the reimbursements that they need with their insurance and with their mutualities. So that's the data that we're working with today. As a company that really relies on digital to, to grow and, and deliver your services, what are some of the barriers that you face? So when I come from the lens of a, a tech entrepreneur, some of the biggest challenges that I have when it comes to talking about health data is the first reaction of the overall citizen, which is fear. Today, data has become a topic of fear. If you ask people, would you be willing to share your health data? The immediate answer is no, 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 no. I'm, I'm too scared. This is super private. I wouldn't want to share that even with members of my own family. And so the biggest challenge that I have is fear and how to build trust around the fact that a tech company, a European tech company, can actually interact with your data for your benefit. That's my problem number one. My problem number two is that all of the actors, and here I'm talking about the state, I'm talking about the regions, I'm talking about the hospitals, I'm talking about the health professionals, all of the actors that create the health data are incredibly conservative. They're, they're, they're basically um, preventing any form of exploration with the data, sharing with the data, or the possibility that innovation emerges from this, from this data. And whether it be the fear of the patients or the conservatism of the health industry, um, I'm trying to play a role to show that it's possible to address the fears, build trust, that it's possible to address conservatism and enable innovation uh, through entrepreneurship. Right. And any solutions that you identify to actually make progress and address those barriers? So there, there are two types of solutions that I'm really exploring to build the trust and address this need for conservatism. It's, on the first hand, um, put forward everything that you're doing in regard to data processing. I'm, I'm choosing the battle of, of transparency. If you go on our website, we declare every data processing, what's the end game, um, what is the benefit to the patient. And we actually do this with progressive disclosure. We don't ask when a patient signs up on Rosa that he gives us all of his consent on every possible treatment that will happen over eternity. We actually ask the minimum data show him that it works, that it creates value, and then step by step add for more consent as we progress. So 
having this radical transparency and building consent progressively are two of the solutions that we're applying to build trust with the patients. In regard to the healthcare professionals or the health system, here we're taking a different perspective, which is showing through ISO certifications how we take security and privacy seriously, showing that we're actually just as reliable as their, say, um, large corporate vendors as a startup. Um, and by building this very strong belief that we're reliable on security and privacy, showing them how we make experiments in such um, a protected way that all of these data owners, these data creators, feel that they can trust us with their data so that we make experiments together, so that we generate innovation together. So you've been an entrepreneur for over a decade. You've seen how the digital space has evolved in, uh, in Europe. Any kind of big takeaways or learnings you'd like to share about how you've seen kind of this journey? So over the last 12 years, if there's really one thing that I've learned is that you know, like, it takes around a decade to create a, a unicorn. And the thing that I find super exciting with tech in Europe for the moment is that we're having an announcement of a unicorn every week, every two weeks. And so we're finally at the point where Europe has caught up with its decade delay with the United States and with China. We're starting to produce our own unicorns. And what I'm even more excited about is how this second generation of tech entrepreneurs that co-founded the unicorn, that were part of a unicorn, are gonna now start to disseminate and create new opportunities. And so I think the future is quite bright for European tech. It's time for us to be ambitious.